In China, this car doesn't really sell. No one really buys it. But outside of China, it's one of the most popular electric cars on the planet. MG have updated the MG4. It's new, it's different, but it's very similar to the previous version. And I've got to say, I'm a little bit shocked, a little bit surprised. I'll tell you why. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. The MG4. It's a good selling car for MG. I mean, it's without this car, their sales would be far lower globally than what they are today. But yeah, I mean, in China, it's not really relevant. I mean, if you said to someone, uh, are you interested in buying an MG4 or what do you think of the MG4? They'd probably look at you with a blank expression on their face. Anyhow, MG4 will arrive in China on the 5th of September, which is, I was thinking to myself, September, that's ages away, isn't it? But actually, it's only two months away. Crazy. In fact, less than two months. So the updated MG4, it's 4.4 meters long. And to be honest, it's basically the same size as the existing MG4, pretty much anyway. So it's still using Sake's Nebula EV platform. The EV platform, therefore, is the same. It uses the same motor. It's a rear-mounted 120 kilowatt permanent magnet synchronous motor, basically the same motor as what's in the existing version. Same battery, lithium-ion phosphate battery, and an NNMC battery in the higher-end version. Top speed is the same, 160 kilometers an hour. Range and battery capacity have not been disclosed, but for what I can tell, they're all exactly the same as the existing version. Anyhow, there are some changes. And there is one big potential game changer with this car. I know that word is thrown around loosely, but it is actually very possible this car could have a massive amount of range in one more expensive variant. Anyhow, the MG4 gets an innovative cockpit system co-developed with Oppo, which offers smartphone mirroring, voice-activated functions, gesture-based navigation, and um, hopefully it's better than MG's existing infotainment because... MG's have infotainment, it's okay. It's definitely not up there with the best. And I know a lot of MG fans hate it when I say this stuff, but that's because you haven't driven a better car, usually. Not always, but usually it's because you haven't driven a better car with better infotainment. I've done a bit of driving an MG4, and it's, it's just okay. Put it that way. Anyway, MG says this new interface is compatible with devices from Oppo, Huawei, and Apple, allowing app updates via smartphones and eliminating the need for in-car downloads. So that could be good. As you can see, the car definitely looks quite different to the existing version, not necessarily in a good way. I think the existing MG4 is one of the better looking hatches around. I think it's quite a nice looking car. Mm, the new version is, mm, well, it's got a closed front grille, arrow style taillights and a full width light bar. And it has traditional door handles, 17 inch wheels, which is a good thing. Um, other than that, not a lot really stands out. But one thing that does stand out is that um, the MG brand director, Chen Kui, Chen, uh, he has said the MG4 could have a new variant with a semi-solid state battery. Now, if that's the case, that's not coming in the September launch. That's coming later on down the track, he said. Sounds like next year. Having a semi-solid state battery could give this vehicle quite a lot of range. You could be looking at, I mean, the longer range version of this car, it gets 530 kilometers of range. So if that battery was a semi-solid semi state battery with potentially 30 to 40% more energy density, you could be looking at potentially up to 700 kilometers of range. That would be awesome. That would be kind of a, a real big selling point because honestly, everything else to do with this car isn't really all that exciting. I mean, the charging speed sounds like it's going to be the same as the existing version, which is just okay. But think about what it's competing against. All these new cars with amazing technology. And MG has sort of said, you know what? This thing sells well as it is. We don't need to really change very much. That's what it looks like to me. But the trump card could be this new battery with this very, very, probably energy density of around 300 watt hours per kilogram, potentially slightly high, but around that, that around that ballpark figure, if it's a 77 kilowatt hour battery, which is the existing long range has, should give it around 700 kilometers of range. Well, that would be cool. Guys, what are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments. There's a brand new MG4. And even though I don't like the look of it, Actually, I've got to admit, it's actually really good. In fact, in some ways, much better than the existing MG4. 
Hey Vikings, Sam Evans here. Hope you guys are doing really well today. If you'd like to become a YouTube member, I'll put a link in the description below. Would really, at this point in time, massively appreciate your support. It just personally would mean a lot to me. There's a lot of EV news going on in China right now. The MG4 is one of the, actually, one of the best selling electric cars outside of China. Inside of China, no one wants them. Like, I think they sold 10 last month. 10 in all of China. A car market of 32 million. 10. But outside of China, this is a really popular car. MG have just revealed the new MG4 hatchback. It's much bigger, it's lighter, and it's been totally redesigned. In a way, I have to admit, it's good, but just to me, it looks weird. Is this, though, their new comeback kit in the brutal Chinese EV war where MG is, to be honest, not really doing that well? Well, let's have a look. The MG4, it's back. And China's regulators have just revealed the size of it. It's actually about as big as a BYD Addo 3, meaning it's gone up a size. It's now 4.4 meters long, 4,400 millimeters. It's 1,842 millimeters wide, 1,551 millimeters tall, wheelbase 2,750 millimeters. It seems like an entirely new car. That means it's actually 108 millimeters longer and 45 millimeters longer stretched wheelbase compared to the old MG4. It's bigger in every direction. It's got a new front grille, slick arrow shaped tail lights like the MG Cybester, which I don't really like, but some people do. It's got reworked doors, a fresh greenhouse. MG is basically saying we've started over with a new car. Why? Well, honestly, because even though here in Australia and in the UK, people don't really, most people don't pay attention to the Chinese market, China matters, right? And MG knows for it to succeed as a brand, it needs to do well in China. And that's not really happening right now. Under the hood, the entry level version, the one we have the details on so far, has a 120 kilowatt motor, tops out at 108, 160 kilometers an hour. So about 100 miles an hour is this top speed. It's lighter too at 1,485 kilograms versus the old one at 1,641 kilograms. So it's quite a bit bigger, but somehow it's 150 kilograms lighter. I mean, that's what, 340 pounds lighter. I don't know how they've done that. It's remarkable. It has a lithium ion phosphate battery pack from uh, Rept Batero Energy. I don't even know who that is, guys. I won't have to look this up. I'm embarrassed to admit I don't know who they are. But anyhow, it's got a lithium-ion phosphate battery. Capacity, we don't know the size of the battery pack yet. But they are apparently bad shopping. Um, they've filed for MG3 and E5 as well. But anyway, this is the new MG4, so it is what it is. Here's the thing. Like I said before, the MG4 has been a complete disaster in China. Outside of China, it's done really well. 